Hi, this is Adam from Maker State, and I'm back with another Scratch Skills video. In this video, I'm going to talk about a specific feature of Scratch teacher accounts called classes. And these classes will allow you to organize your students, easily share projects with them, or easily view their projects, and even do things like managing passwords and, and things like that. So this is a feature only for Scratch teacher accounts. If you don't have a Scratch teacher account, you should request one. That is, if you are teaching students how to do this, you should request one by going to scratch.mit.edu slash educators, and you can follow some steps there to get a teacher account. Um, but once you have a teacher account, this will be your homepage. And we can get to the My Classes feature by just clicking on My Classes right here in the middle. And I can create a new class by clicking New Class on the top right, and I can name it whatever I want, name it My Class, and I can add a description. This is the class page for my after school makerspace. Okay, great. Now, let's talk about adding students to these classes. So there's a few different methods for adding students. One method is to add them one by one using this new student um, addition here on the right. And we could we'd create a username and add that username and then add the students one by one. And then they would start to populate the class. This way is a little bit tedious because it requires you to come up with the usernames for your students and add them one by one, which which is fine. Maybe maybe that's not such a big deal. It depends on how big your class is. Um, the next option is adding students through a sign up link, which you give to your students, and your students will follow this link and sign up for your class that way. This is what I usually do because it allows all the students to sign themselves up at once, and it also lets them create their own username and password. Which, which I like to let them do. But again, maybe you want to create those things for them. Either way, to do this, you generate a link. And this is a big, ugly link here. So what I would do with a link like this is I would copy it and go to a website like tinyurl.com. You know, there's other websites that can do this, but tinyurl is what I use. And this is a really useful tool for shortening long, ugly URLs that you want people to go to. So I could paste this in here, this long URL, and I could give an option for what I'd call it. Maybe I'd call it my scratch class or something, or maybe you'd do something more specific depending on your school. But I can make a tiny URL with my scratch class. And here we go. Here is my link for my new class. So now instead of having everyone go to this long, you know, horrible link, we can just have people type tinyurl.com slash my scratch class. So let's try that here in a new tab. Tinyurl.com slash my scratch class. And that, once this loads, will bring me to a page where I can sign up to be in a specific scratch class, right? So, you know, students will be prompted to create a username and a password here, and we'll from here go through the steps, you know, of making their, their scratch account, okay? So that's what I like to do. The third option for adding students is to have them, uh, is to upload a CSV. And this is a very, you know, efficient way to add your students if you know who all of your students are, and especially if you're savvy with putting together a CSV or a comma separated values file. So if we click on this, we have the option to upload a CSV. And here you see the format for how to do this, usernames and passwords separated by commas on, you know, um, on different lines. So you could create something like this in Excel or Google Sheets. It's not not very hard to do, but requires some different you know preparation or steps so those are all some different ways of adding students to your classes so here i'm on another one of my account pages where i have some some more vibrant classes and so here's some different classes and i can just go through these and see you know here's a bunch of students in one class so for example if i wanted to change a student's password let's say a student forgets a password i can click on the account settings and then either prompt a student or manually change their password. So prompting a student to change their password will allow them to change it themselves or I can just go and manually change it myself. Okay, I'm not going to do that right now. I can also go into a student's account and see, oh, what projects have they shared or what projects have they favorited or what studios do they, do they curate to? Okay, studios, by the way, are another really useful tool in, in Scratch in general, but in classes, because they allow you to 
share projects to a group of students at once or also have all of your students share projects to the same place. So here's an example of a studio where some students have shared projects they've been working on or projects they've remixed, it looks like in some, in some cases. So these are really useful to uh, just be able to collect projects in a specific place. And so those are pretty much the different features of, of Scratch accounts, Scratch classes, I should say. So definitely try to get your students into a class and uh, use, use these features to help make your, your teaching more, more smooth, okay? So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you back for the next Scratch Skills video. Bye.